One of uh, my most exciting days as governor because we're delivering on tax relief for the people of Colorado. Um, we're signing a series of bills. I, I'm just going to uh, really speak once about kind of what they, what they all do together. Um, but together, we're, we're providing meaningful tax relief so families can uh, afford to live in our great state a little bit better, keep more money in their pockets. Uh, really, among the capstones, uh, we are reducing the residential uh, property assessment rate for homeowners, um, providing some real relief. Nobody should ever be priced out of their own home. Um, and by the way, I would add that while we're all sometimes frustrated by increasing property values, that, that's a better problem to have than home values going down 10, 15 percent. We had that in 08, 09, and people were underwater in their mortgages, and sure, their, their tax bill went down when their assessment went down, but that was little consolation when they couldn't afford their mortgage and they were underwater on their home. So it's a good problem to have, but that's, that doesn't ease the mind of folks who uh, have to pay their property taxes. So we're not only reducing... Uh, the, prop the, the property tax assessment rate for homeowners. We're also doing additional uh, cuts for agriculture and renewable energy properties. But just as importantly, no Coloradan will have to pay out of pocket more than a 4% increase. Um, because we know that some folks' homes went up 10 15%. And by the way, that's great for them on the wealth building side and the equity side, but not so great on the monthly expense side. And so any uh, increase above 4% after this uh, rate cut uh, can still can be deferred. Uh, essentially, and accrued and, and not paid. And, um, and that's a powerful tool to make sure that no Coloradan uh, is ever forced out of their home uh, simply because of increases in home value. Uh, we are also doing something significant for those who need it the most. The earned income tax credit and the child tax credit are two powerful mechanisms that, uh, that provide tax refunds to lower income Coloradans. And I first of all applaud the work of Senator Bennett nationally and the work to increase the EITC and the child tax credit nationally. <clears throat> what Colorado is doing is very complementary to that. Uh, first of all, we're expanding earned income uh, tax credit to uh, childless workers uh, age 19 to 24 as well as over 65. So people aren't penalized on their taxes just because they don't have children in that regard. And we're expanding the earned income tax credit to 20% of the federal credit up to 25% through 2025 for joint filers uh, with income up to $54,000. As an example, we'll get uh, $1,196 back um, through through a tax credit. Um, the, the child tax credit has existed on Colorado's books for, for some time. It's actually never uh, been used. There's never been money that's gone out that way. Finally, we are sending money out that way. And so that means, uh, you know, for filers um, uh, up to age six, they'll be getting refunds up to about $75,000 in income. So it's really helping the Colorado families that need it the most. It's helping the kids who need it the most. Uh, it's a really substantial, coupled with the work of Senator Bennett, the Congress on the National Child Tax Credit, which is more expansive. You know, keep in mind anything Colorado does, never going to be as big as, as, as the federal side. Um, but thankfully, uh, we will be complementing that to really help reduce, in a major way, childhood and family poverty in Colorado. We're also making sure that um, seniors above age 65 will not have to pay taxes on their Social Security. They paid in, they worked hard. Uh, some had to pay income taxes uh, on uh, their income uh, from Social Security. They will no longer have to. Uh, we are supporting employee ownership of companies. When a company does well, everybody should do well. Uh, and, and allowing, again, on, on the tax side, uh, refunds and credits for uh, companies that convert to employee ownership will help make sure that when the economy does well, uh, everybody does well. Uh, also, another really exciting uh, bill to reduce paperwork and save small businesses money on taxes is raising the threshold on the business personal property tax. This is a tax that small businesses have to file based on their assets, uh, their hard assets, and we are uh, after the signing of this bill, tens of thousands of small businesses in Colorado, up to 50,000 in physical capital assets, won't even have to file or pay the business personal property tax. And, and both of those are a huge benefit because paying, it is a relatively small tax and thankfully they won't have to pay. But frankly, filing is often more work and they won't even have to deal with filing 
uh, the business personal property tax uh, on up to $50,000 uh, in, in assets. I am supportive and very open to increasing that threshold uh, more in the future and working with the legislature to do it. We're also excited to be able to take advantage of uh, reducing the federal tax liability for Colorado small businesses. Uh, in the last tax reform package, which limited state and local tax deductions for LLCs and S-Corps, uh, we have found a way that some other states have already embraced to allow LLCs and S-Corps, and, and that generally means small business in Colorado, small and medium business. Remember, any really big business is a C-Corp, and uh, multinational businesses are C-Corps. LLCs and S-Corps are generally small and medium businesses. Uh, they will be able to, uh, without um, affecting their status as S-Corps and LLCs, file like a C-Corp for purposes of taking the federal, state, and local tax deduction. Uh, and I want to thank on that bill Representative Ortiz, Senator Kolker, and Representative Van Winkle. This will save Colorado businesses hundreds of millions of dollars on their federal taxes. And I do encourage the legislature to take the next step next session, working with uh, Senator Kolker, Representative Ortiz, Representative Van Winkle, and allowing that to be done retroactively for people who refile for the 1819 and 1920 tax years so that our small businesses can benefit fully from state and local tax deductions. So uh, this couldn't be a more uh, exciting package. Uh, really a lot of great work. Um, I want to thank so many people um, who helped uh, make this happen, and I'll, I'll thank a few by name. Uh, Kevin uh, Amirasani, who can't join us today, but joined uh, as an analyst under Kerry Kennedy, who's with us, and I also want to thank uh, and worked hard on, uh, on making these numbers meet. Uh, I want to thank the broad coalition of folks uh, from across the spectrum, uh, the bipartisan uh, support for many of these bills, uh, and uh, really a great coalition. I, I really have always felt that, you know, uh, people should be at the center of who our tax code supports, and we should minimize uh, the tax burden on hardworking Coloradans and small businesses. And all too often, I think Colorado's no exception, we're not particularly to blame, but all too often, it's the big guys that have the lobbyists and get the special interest uh, breaks, and uh, as a result, everybody else pays more than they should in taxes. Uh, no, no set of bills can remedy all that, but this goes a long way towards leveling that playing field to make sure that nobody get, that there's less special breaks and that we all uh, pay a lower rate, every homeowner, every commercial property owner. Uh, I would add, coupled with uh, the voter-approved reduction in our state income tax from 4.63 to 4.55 percent, coupled with the strong budget year we're having, which will enable an additional reduction of the state income tax rate to 4.5 percent for next year, along with tax refunds for every Coloradan. So there's a lot of good news uh, on the tax front. Uh, essentially, bottom line, uh, your family will be saving money and uh, will have a, a uh, lower tax burden thanks to uh, the hard work of the legislature. The first two bills in tandem are HB 21-13-11 and HB 21-13-12. Um, they have different provisions and um, are, are separate bills and move separately, but I want to thank Representative Sirota, Representative Weissman, Senator Hansen, and Senator Moreno for their hard work on these bills. We'll, we'll turn it over to them. We'll be signing both of those together. Uh, as a unit, and we'll lead with one of our leaders of tax reform in the state legislature, Representative Emily Sirota. Thank you, Governor Polis, um, and the incredible team standing here with us today. Um, it is such a wonderful day for Colorado children and families. Um, We've got another great bill signing coming later today, but um, right now we are talking about the Tax Fairness for Coloradans package, uh, a package that truly will put Coloradans over corporations to close special interest loopholes so that we can lift up our families, our young families, and our workers um, so that as we come out of this pandemic, we truly can build back stronger uh, because we know that the status quo wasn't working for many of our, uh, our Colorado families. And in this way, we will dedicate uh, more economic relief toward our families, our small businesses, our workers who, uh, who need it the most. And 
you know, it is, it's such an honor to be here uh, for the signing of these bills, knowing that, uh, that this has been a work in progress for, for many, many years. And we, we stand here um, with, uh, it's, it's not just us, but, but all, the, all the work that has gone into it before attempts, previous attempts to fund the child tax credit um, now here after it being on the books since 2013, we are, we are finally taking that step. And so I just uh, want to reiterate my gratitude for this incredible team that came together uh, with the administration and all of these community partners and our, our parent ambassadors, George and Alicia, and, and, and so many people who poured their heart and soul into this to, to share with the legislature, with the news media, um, what it means for these additional dollars to flow into the pockets of our Colorado families. So thank you very much for everything uh, that you did. And this was years in the making, and, um, and it is truly a wonderful and special day. And I will turn it over to my co-prime, Representative Weissman. All right. Um, thank you, Rep. Sirota. You know, I've, I've told um, my colleague many times it was a, a long road uh, to get here, but um, had a wonderful fellow traveler. Traveler is plural on that road, so thank you. Thank you, Governor, for doing the signing ceremony, and um, I'll just reiterate what you said, which is I want to thank everybody here who helped advocate uh, for these bills, and I especially want to uh, express uh, my gratitude for Kevin Amirasani and Carrie Kennedy on your staff. The state is lucky to have their work ethic and their dedication. Uh, you know, we often say uh, in, in politics and governing that a budget is a moral document. I very much agree. Because a budget is a moral document, a tax code also is a moral document, being one of the foundation stones of a budget. Uh, it is a moral document because questions of who contributes in what way to this whole thing that we call society and what exemptions and deductions and loopholes and so forth are themselves moral questions. When we come into office, we inherit laws and go back in some cases to statehood. Uh, including tax laws. Some of those don't get looked at as often as they should. Uh, we looked at some laws in this package of bills that in some cases have been on the books unchanged uh, for decades. But the world has been changing. The needs of Coloradans have been changing out there as those laws have been not changing. So in, in the work that has been at least a year of the making, longer as my colleague pointed out in some respects, uh, you know, we did a comprehensive review. We learned from our state auditor. We learned from the experience of other states. And we made some changes that are going to help hundreds of thousands uh, of lower and middle income families who we know have been struggling and tens of thousands of Colorado small businesses. And we balance that out by closing some loopholes that have been on the books for too long that have been very narrow uh, in their, their application and, and not the kind of policy that we should be supporting in, in Colorado. You know, we often say, um, you know, we're all in the same boat. I think what's truer about the last 15 or 16 months of our experience going through COVID and, and thankfully now recovering uh, from COVID is that we've all been in that same storm, but different people have been in slightly different boats. Everybody has suffered from COVID. Uh, some have suffered a fair bit. Some have suffered tremendously. We know that folks who were already struggling before COVID, uh, you know, lower income folks, folks working two and three jobs, folks with healthcare challenges, have been struggling worse, and with this package of bills uh, today, uh, we're going to help folks get through that storm uh, a bit better. So thank you, Governor, for your support. Senator. Uh, good, uh, good morning. It's great to see um, such a crowd for the signing of tax legislation. That's never usually <laughs> the case. So um, this is wonderful. Um, I, I just want to say, uh, you know, this is a long conversation that started last year. Um, and I actually really want to thank my colleagues in the legislature for holding strong this year, because last year, uh, a, a similar package of bills was introduced and unfortunately watered down through the process. This year, we held strong. We we made sure that we were putting the interests of everyday Coloradans ahead of special interest tax exemptions and special interest tax loopholes. Um, even though uh, the governor and I have occasional minor disagreements about <laughs> what the income tax rate should ultimately be, what we can agree on is that the tax code should be fair uh, and should put hardworking Coloradans uh, before anyone else. For a long time, and this is, our work is not complete, 
Because for a long time, the tax code has benefited corporations, special interests, over um, the people who actually do the work and, and provide the state the money to fund government services. Um, that is where the majority of support comes from, from the state government, is income taxes from individuals. So let's put them first. Let's make sure that they benefit from the tax code. Uh, and that's what this would do through the earned income tax credit and the child tax credit. The last thing I'll just note is that it's really important that Congress make that child tax credit permanent, that it's not just for one year, that we continue to support uh, those families with children, those families that encounter those uh, uh, expenses. Um, and so hopefully we will see that happen as well. And I know our own U.S. Senator Michael Bennett is leading the charge on that. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to Senator Chris Hansen. Well, very good afternoon to everyone. This is uh, a day where we get to celebrate many, many months, years of work. And it's appropriate to do that when we take this big a step toward tax fairness in the state. And I'm so pleased to be at the signing today and, and celebrating with all of you. It's great to have families, families with children here, remind us why we do this work in the first place. Uh, this is about expanding opportunity and fairness for working families, families with children. Uh, we still have work ahead of us, though. The earned income tax credit, we've drastically expanded it for Colorado families through the state tax code, but we're still only 25% of the way there compared to what the federal government does uh, with the EITC. So still more work ahead of us, no doubt, but today is a big step forward. And it is always the right time to improve the tax code. Always the right time. And when you have things on the books for decades that are not working for the state of Colorado, we need to make adjustments. And that's what we're doing today with 1311 and 1312. So I'm proud to be a part of this effort. I'm proud to take this big step forward with the legislature, with my colleagues, and with the governor's signature day today to make it law. Colorado will be better for it. Our tax code will be better for it. And I want to thank everyone who is part of this effort. Official. They're both a law called. Senator Colker, uh, this is the uh, reducing the federal tax liability for uh, so many Colorado small and medium businesses. And I want to welcome, I want to thank and Kevin Van Winkle. I want to thank Representative Van Winkle, uh, Senator Colker, Representative Ortiz. I'll speak over here. Uh, I want to thank uh, Representative Van Winkle, Senator Colker, Representative Ortiz for saving hundreds of millions of dollars in federal tax liability for small and medium-sized Colorado companies. Uh, we know there's more work ahead, and we're very excited about doing that work with you. And we will turn it over to Representative Ortiz. Thank you, Governor. I want to say a special thank you to both the Senate sponsors that passed it over to the House first. I know there was a little bit of concerns on whether this was going to come forward or not. I want to thank uh, Representative Van Winkle for being um, a partner in faith um, to the very end, making sure that we got this passed. Because the bottom line, it is going to save small businesses money. Um, we have a saying in the military that NCOs are the backbone of the Army. Well, in our economy, 
small and middle businesses are the backbone. And they're going to be the backbone of building back stronger. So I'm very proud to be a part of that. I'm very excited to hear Governor Polis say that he would like to work with us to make it retroactively next year. So just thanks all around and great work. And of course, thank you to Representative Ortiz for sticking with the bill uh, for month after month and also our Senate sponsors as well. Of course, big thanks to the governor uh, for supporting tax relief. This bill really is hundreds of millions of dollars of true tax relief for hardworking taxpayers in our great small and medium sized business, our job creators, and our Main Street employers. So thank you, Governor. Thank you, uh, bill sponsors. And we should point out, not only does it not cost the state a dime, it actually might raise a few million dollars for the state. Right. Um, and I, is Mark Ferrandino still in the room? I want to thank him for his work on this. Our, our, at, 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 um, Department of Revenue, we appreciate that because this one takes a little work to implement, but it's it's more than more than worth it. Senator Kolker. Thank you, Governor. Uh, thank you, Representative Van Winkle and Representative Ortiz for your work in the House. Uh, it was a long, arduous process back and forth between the two houses to make sure we get this bill introduced and signed into law. Uh, Senator Woodward is not here today. Rob Woodward from Loveland, he was the other co-prime sponsor. He actually brought the bill to me from a CPA in his area in January when we were actually governor notifying you that we were in session he and I were s talking about this bill <clears throat> excuse me in the uh, president's office uh, January 16th uh, so we started talking then and worked through a lot of the issues and and got it to work with Phil Horwitz on uh, getting this uh, in, into uh, law so lots of people out there a lot of people working on this and I do look forward to next year uh, doing the research here and uh, thank you to members of the press for continuing to keep this uh, uh, issue at, at the forefront also. So, thank you. Thank you. Should we sign the bill? Yep. Yes, please. It's official. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Okay, we have Representative Escar joining us, uh, and we have Senator Hansen, Representative Gray. Uh, I believe Senator Rankin isn't with us. I'm going to turn it over to Senator Hansen, but I just want to, since he's not here, thank Senator Rankin for his uh, courage and work on this. Um, there are always those that will oppose tax breaks for political reasons, and uh, there were those that tried to politicize the needed relief for Colorado homeowners that we knew we needed to provide. And Senator Rankin stood up to that. He said, you know what? Uh, we need to reduce assessment rates for homeowners, provide this deferral mechanism. And I want to thank him for his courage. And I want to thank Senator Hansen for his leadership without which this bill would simply not have happened. So thank you, Senator Hansen. All right. Governor, thank you so much. I'm so pleased that we can sign this into law today. Uh, huge thank you to co-sponsors in the House as well. We'll hear from Majority Leader Escar in just one moment and, and Representative Gray. Uh, but I want to take just a moment to, to talk about uh, the, the bipartisanship that happened on this bill. Uh, Senator Rankin and myself and a, and a broad group of stakeholders uh, really worked on this as a fulfillment of the promises we made when we asked the voters to repeal the Gallagher Amendment. If you all remember from the last election, uh, uh, yes on Amendment B campaign, and the voters said yes, and they said yes in an overwhelming way. And they wanted these formulas out of the Constitution and asked us as the legislature, as, as uh, we looked at the economic situation, as we looked at the property markets, to make adjustments. And this bill fulfills that promise. We are doing very specific property tax relief for multifamily units and for homeowners across the state. It is going to make an immediate difference for folks who live in apartments, for folks who own their own home, who rent an apartment or a home, and it's going to make a big difference for ag producers uh, and renewable energy developers in the state as well. We need this relief to make sure the economy is strong, make sure we get back on our feet quickly and recover. And I think it's very appropriate uh, that we did this in a targeted way with Senate Bill 293. At the same time, we're making sure we have the funding for important services in the state, for the fire districts, for the water districts, for the school districts in the state of Colorado. 
And 293, I think, very carefully balances the need to support those vital services at the same time providing very targeted tax relief on the property tax side. So I'm super proud to be a part of this team. I thank the governor for signing us into law today. And let me turn it over to Majority Leader Escar. Majority Leader Escar. Thank you so much, uh, Governor. I appreciate you. And thank you to my dual sponsors as well. Uh, we really worked hard on this. And thankfully for technology, because as a very pregnant woman, I just didn't feel safe driving along I-25 uh, when I can literally go into labor at any minute right now. So thank you for your grace on that. Um, today, we are responsibly reducing property tax rates and targeting assistance to Coloradans who we know need it the most. And at the same time, we're protecting Colorado's local governments, fire districts, schools, police, and local libraries that would have been devastated by permanently losing nearly $1 billion in revenue every single year permanently. I'm proud that the legislature came together to pass this bipartisan bill that will ensure rural Colorado doesn't continue to bear the consequences of rising property values in more populated areas of the state. Part of the work we did on, um, re on repealing the Gallagher Amendment was really to say one size does not fit all in Colorado. And that's absolutely true when it comes to property values. What 293 does is helps us take time to really look at how we can provide um, some good relief right now as we move forward in, in where we are today. So thank you, Governor, for signing this today. And I'll turn it over to my house co-prime, Representative Matt Gray. Uh, thanks, everybody. I mean, what this bill does is address um, one of the paradoxes of this uh, pandemic that we've seen, which is even though uh, a lot of folks have suffered in losing their jobs or have their jobs put off, um, we have not seen the cost of housing go down at all. If anything, it's gone up. Um, and so what we're doing is we're, we're, we're trying to address that head on um, because, you know, during the last recession, you know, back in 08, 09, um, the cost of housing went way down. And that's just not the case at all right now. It's, it's gone up even more. And so what we're doing is we're providing targeted relief for the cost of housing that's also temporary because we know that you know, there's going to be a season for everything, and um, eventually uh, those tides will turn, and people still want good schools, they want good fire service, they want um, good government services. So we're not going to um, inhibit that ability at all, but right now while we're seeing this dramatic spike, uh, during a time where a lot of folks are really hurting, um, we're going to provide them some relief. So I'm proud to be a part of that. I think the my co-sponsors... Um, you know, for working together on this, and I thank the governor very much for signing it. Thank you very much. All right, let's provide uh, the homeowners of Colorado some, some needed relief. It's official. Congratulations, everybody. Congratulations. Representative. Thanks, sir. Senator, thanks, thanks for your work. Yeah. You know,